Okay. Good morning, everyone. And on behalf of the MOC and the WMS, welcome to Mission Awareness Sunday at St. Andrews. We will be following a worship plan developed by Dr. Blair Bertrand for the WMS. Reverend Diane will have more to say about Dr. Bertrand at the end of the service. And we're really pleased that we have Diane with us this morning. Unlike the past few Sundays, several people will participate in the service today. We thank Peter DeVries for his support in accomplishing this uh, and generally for helping to keep us connected during this period of isolation. Hope you've had a chance to listen to the music selections that are posted on the website this morning. If not, you can still do it afterwards. Jesus Christ joins with people from all walks of life, from all nations, bringing them together, opening the scriptures so that they can hear the good news and then go forth in joy. Regardless of whether we have been followers of Christ forever or just a while, whether we have understood God clearly or only faintly, whether we have been included or excluded, Jesus invites us to stop, to hear the word of God, and to respond in faith. Let us accept that invitation. Let us worship. Let us pray. As we gather together to worship you, we ask that you astonish us with your reality. The creator of the universe speaking to us through brokenness. That you startle us into silence word made flesh transforming our everyday speech into faithful witness that you open our eyes the spirit who makes clear the truth revealing the plain good news even in our blindness we ask this with the confidence of your promise in jesus christ amen he starts with isaiah Chapter 52, starting at verse 13. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up, and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance, beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see, and that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we, could, we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked, and his tomb with the rich although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish we shall see light. 
we shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he do does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and he was passing through the region. He proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm assuming I'm unmuted now and everyone can hear me. I'll check for sure. Well, good morning. It's great to be here with you this morning, live, live stream. Uh, not in person, but we are united by the Holy Spirit, which is exciting. Uh, normally, I wouldn't have a Sunday morning free, but because of the pandemic, I record my sermons for Rockwood, and they're already online, and I'm free on a Sunday morning, which is very unusual. So it's great pleasure for me to be able to share in this service with you this morning. So our sermon this morning and the, all of the liturgy for the service has been prepared by the Reverend Dr. Blair Bertrand, and I'll share a little bit about him before I begin the sermon. The Reverend Dr. Blair Bertrand is one of our missionaries with the Presbyterian Church in Canada. He and his wife Vivian are on a three-year appointment with the Church of Central Africa Presbyterian. Reverend Bertrand works with the Theological Education by Extension in Malawi, and this offers theological education for both clergy and laity. He also teaches practical theology at Zomba Theological College and is affiliated with the Blantyre Synod Youth Department. He's a busy guy. Uh, Reverend Bertrand completed his doctoral studies in practical theology at Princeton Theological Seminary in 2014. He's also served at Calvin Presbyterian Church in Abbotsford, BC, 
and was the convener of the Committee on Church Doctrine. Oh, he's also a member of the Canada Youth Advisory Group. And for Blair, uh, he says, mission is first and foremost God's mission. He shares that God is a God who loves the other, who sends God's very self to that other, and who assumes the flesh of the other. When Jesus calls the disciples, he almost immediately sends them out. To be sent is to participate in the mission of God. So let's pray before we begin our sermon. God of rest and renewal, still our hearts and our minds with your Holy Spirit. Open us to receive your word so that we may come to know you more fully and follow you more faithfully. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the sermon title today is What Can We Learn? And it is based on Acts. 8 uh, 26 to 40 and Rhonda thankfully just read all that for us and all the uh, reading from Isaiah thank you Rhonda that was a long reading but it was good so here is what the Reverend Dr. Blair Bertrand says many churches have stained glass windows and many of those show stories about Jesus like Jesus knocking at the door or Jesus and the little children or Jesus in the last supper we have some of those around our sanctuary at St. Andrews oftentimes these windows tell other less obvious stories as well the small words at the bottom of these windows tell the story of love and of loss in a church far from here in a small city named Zomba in a country called Malawi, there is a window that tells another story. It is of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. So it does tell a biblical story. And this window is dedicated to lost loved ones. So it does tell the story of the congregation as well. But this window also tells another story. Philip is pictured standing above the Ethiopian eunuch at the moment of baptism. And the eunuch is looking up with joy and it is clear that his eyes are gazing up at Philip. Now Philip in this stained glass window is white and the eunuch is black. Malawi is mostly made up of black Africans and the window that we're talking about is in an old Presbyterian church that was built by Scottish missionaries. Philip, a Middle Eastern man, would have had lighter skin than an Ethiopian. But the idea that he would have had the same skin color as a very white Scottish missionary is really not believable. So why select that moment and that pose? There are other possible moments. The eunuch is rich and powerful. The text makes that very clear. He takes care of the treasury and he has a chariot. In contrast, Philip has nothing. He's on foot. Why not have the eunuch inviting Philip into the chariot? Or both of them side by side reading the word of God. There are many other possibilities, but this is a story that was told at that time. It was a story of white missionaries bringing the gospel to black Malawians, and it's not a unique story. The European and North American missionary efforts of the late 19th and early 20th century spread all over the globe. And praise God that they did. Churches from Nigeria to Korea, Japan to India, Guatemala to Nicaragua were strengthened 
Now there are more Presbyterians in places like Korea and Malawi than Scotland or Canada. We are talking about Zomba, a small city in the small country of Malawi on the big continent of Africa because of that missionary effort. The Presbyterian Church in Canada continues to partner with the church in Malawi through the Presbyterian World Service and Development International Ministries and through the Women's Missionary Society and the congregations all have long standing relationships and ministries there. But still, how might we design that window today? How might we understand mission in our world? Well, the Ethiopian unit can guide us in answering those questions by answering the three questions that he poses in this story. These three questions and from these, we get insight into what mission might look like today. The first question the eunuch asks is, how can I understand unless someone guides me? For centuries, commentators have noted how incredible this question is. Recently, Barbara Brown Taylor noted that the text presents the Ethiopian as someone wealthy enough to ride in a chariot, educated enough to read Greek, devout enough to study the prophet Isaiah, and humble enough to know that he cannot understand what he is reading without help. He is wealthy, educated, devout, and humble. His status as an Ethiopian eunuch, that is his status as a foreigner and someone who is ritually unclean, likely keeps him out of the temple. But we don't see him as an outsider. We see him as devout, owning and reading scripture on the bumpy road home. Even with his power and his piety, he asks for help. In this humility that commentators note, he has all the material resources that he needs, yet he lacks something. He cannot understand his faith without help. He knows it and he reaches out to Philip. In the Zomba stained glass window, the missionaries are imagined as Philip. They are the ones who bring the answers to the ignorant Ethiopian eunuch. But what if the opposite is truer? North American Christians are wealthy and educated. Perhaps we are the Ethiopian eunuch and what we need then is piety and humility. Visitors to Zomba from Canada love the music. Reports back are filled with rapturous descriptions of the passion and the joy of the people. And that is true and maybe something we can learn from. But there are even deeper things of God that we might learn about. Take, for example, the Reverend Dr. Takuzi Chitsulo, who is one of the ministers in Zomba. He has a PhD in the Old Testament, an achievement that the Presbyterian Church in Canada supported. He analyzed the minor prophet Habakkuk in relation to the move from one party rule to multi democracy in Malawi. That's pretty heady stuff that would play well in an Old Testament course here in Canada. So he is a scholar and a minister, but he's also aware of evil. That evil does not just take the form of oppressive structures. Sometimes evil takes a personal turn. Spirits, demons, and those who use them are part of everyday ministry. The Presbyterian Church in Malawi conducts 
exorcisms. This would likely make many wealthy and educated people feel uncomfortable. But instead of dismissing these ideas, perhaps we should humble ourselves and ask, what can we learn? Dr. Chitsulo humbled himself to learn in a very Western way, excelling at his PhD. What would it take for us to humble ourselves and to listen to his and his church's view on evil and the spirit world? The Ethiopian's humility should serve as an example. Mission must start from a place of humility. Whether we're reaching out to our neighbors across the street or around the world, we cannot start by assuming that we have all the answers. Our wealth and our power can blind us to the fact that we too need help in understanding what we read. The eunuch's second question, about who may I ask? Does the prophet say this about himself or about someone else? This question guards against one misunderstanding of humility. Humility might become, we don't know anything. False humility is this kind of self-defeating attitude. But true humility is an honest assessment of our limits and the strengths of another. The eunuch does not humbly ask for understanding from just anyone. He asks Philip. What we know of Philip is that he is an evangelist. He brings the good news of Jesus Christ to many. When he preaches, people respond, asking for baptism and going forth with joy. It doesn't seem to matter where Philip is, the good news just pours out of him. He has just been kicked out of Jerusalem, but still he preaches. He goes to Samaria, a place where people from Jerusalem don't like, and he still preaches. And now the Holy Spirit takes him into the wilderness on the road to North Africa, and he still preaches. Mission today means that the good news gets preached to those who need to hear it. The Ethiopian eunuch was struggling to understand an important passage of Isaiah. In that passage, Isaiah actually mentions eunuchs. It is not too much to think that the eunuch, the Ethiopian eunuch, wondered if the words of Isaiah could be for him could be a promise of salvation for him, could be a word of promise for him. When Philip opens up the scripture, the Ethiopian eunuch sees Jesus, sees the salvation that God has offered him, sees that the promise of the Holy Spirit is for him. This salvation and prompts a third question. What is to prevent me from being baptized? In other words, since the Ethiopian eunuch was humble enough to hear the good news to him, what now could stop him from responding? In this story, there is nothing that seems to stop the Holy Spirit from acting. Notice that while we focus on the eunuch and Philip, it is the Holy Spirit who is doing much of the action. The Holy Spirit comes to Philip and the Holy Spirit gives him directions. In response to their conversation, both Philip and the eunuch go down into the waters of baptism and as they come up, the Holy Spirit moves each on his own path. Philip goes on to evangelize elsewhere, while the eunuch goes back to Ethiopia rejoicing. So the answer 
to what can stop the unit from baptism is nothing. In fact, we have to ask ourselves the question, have I really heard the good news if I do not respond by seeking out God, rejoicing, and carrying the message back to my people? The Ethiopian eunuch was already faithful. He had come to Jerusalem to worship. But his encounter with Philip brings his faith to a whole new level. Now he returns to his home with a new sense of mission. We might start thinking that Philip is the missionary here, but in the end, the Holy Spirit uses both as missionaries. Philip to the Ethiopian and the eunuch to the other Ethiopians. In the end, it is the Holy Spirit's mission that both get to participate without anything to stop them. For centuries, the Western church operated from a place of power. It was our mission, our strategies, our resources, and our people. But what this story reveals is that our mission is best when it's not actually our mission. Mission is best when it is God's mission that we participate in, which begs the question, what is God's mission for St. Andrew's Guelph today? Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch answer that question differently, but they do it from the same place. It is the cross-cultural encounter that reveals the mission of God. They come together in the wilderness, a place that is neither of their homes, but is on the way to both, and enter into a small chariot to focus on reading scripture. Is it possible for us here in Guelph to find those in-between places where we might encounter someone who is very different than ourselves. And in doing that, have God open up a new mission for us. And now, might we imagine that window from Zomba differently? Might it be that if we were to design that window today, that we might portray the humility of the eunuch? Acknowledging that the one who has worldly power needs something from the evangelist Philip. Could we make it so that both of their faces are alight with the good news, sitting side by side as they read scripture together? And what about putting the Holy Spirit moving them in response out of the waters of baptism and sending them on their respective missions? Does mission today look like a cross-cultural encounter in the wilderness that reveals God's mission for both Philip and the eunuch? So this is the Reverend Dr. Blair Bertrand's sermon, and we have some thought-provoking words, so I hope you enjoyed that. It was a, it was a great sermon, and it was my honor to deliver his sermon. And now uh, we will move on to the offering. So in these days and these times where we're all isolated at home, there are still opportunities to give. And on the slide in front of you, you see some of the opportunities that we have. You can still do the old fashioned thing and write out a check and put it in the mail and mail it to St. Andrews. Um, you can still do that. If you would like to look online on the St. Andrews website, there's also the link to Canada Health. So you can donate, put your offering in online. And then some of the ways that we can share our resources with mission organizations. Uh, if you would like to make a donation to the Presbyterian World Service and Development, of which uh, the Reverend Dr. Blair Bertrand is part of, uh, you can do that. The link is on our website, and 
is that, is somebody gonna correct me? Is it on our website? Yes, okay. Um, and if you're looking for assistance or want help, you can check out the community-based website for the Guelph Coronavirus. And the Mission and Outreach Committee is encouraging us to donate towards the Saturday night suppers. So that's Royal City Mission. And on Saturday, May 9th, which is coming up very soon, members of the committee will be purchasing items in support of that evening's meal. So this is something that you could uh, donate to as well. And a donation can be made on or through our website or through royalcitymission.ca. Is that on our slide? But you can find that link on our website. Oh, next page. Uh, another ministry that you can consider donating to is the Ecumenical Campus Ministry. And there is a request to support international students at the University of Guelph at this time. So again, that link is on our website. And another one, so we have lots, lots and lots we could uh, participate in. The Chalmers Community Services Center, and they are continuing to support the mo our most vulnerable citizens here in Guelph during this pandemic. And there's also the Guelph Neighborhood Support Coalition and their Emergency Food Fund, and that supports the North End Harvest Market and the various neighborhood pantries. So this is another way you could help within our community. And the drop-in center as well is collaborating with other community partners and they continue to care for our homeless population. So again, another very worthy place to donate uh, at, at any time, but especially at this time during the pandemic. So please prayerfully consider. And tomorrow is the 75th anniversary of the liberation of the Netherlands. So you are encouraged, if you would, uh, to join in a long lasting Dutch tradition to honor those who have served and sacrificed. And the National Day of Remembrance in the Netherlands takes place on May 4th, which is tomorrow. And they say in these unprecedented times, let's be silent to remember. So if you would keep a moment of silence tomorrow, May 4th at 2 p.m., then we can participate in the 75th anniversary. And I have an announcement to make, a sad announcement. Uh, Janet had sent out an email, uh, but Vera McGowan, who lived at Norfolk Manor, passed away on Easter Sunday, April 18th. She was a great lady. I enjoyed visiting with her. She was always full of funk and personality and she will be missed. So that's Vera McGowan. So let's come before God in prayer. Let's pray. God, you send disciples on their way with joy. And we come before your throne of grace, bringing our own joys. We delight in new life, in babies coming into our world. We celebrate new relationships and friendships of various kinds and the deepening of old ones. We are grateful for meaningful work that give our lives purpose. We also come to you carrying sorrow and despair. There are those who suffer infertility and those who struggle with situations they never imagined facing. There are some of us who have broken relationships, hard words exchanged and conflicts unresolved. Others struggle to find meaning day to day, wondering if it will ever get better. Lord, as we consider your mission, we are also aware of the joys and the sorrows of our neighbors. Open our ears so that we can hear what delights them and also what causes them sorrow. 
give us wisdom so that we don't try to fix the sorrow of others. Rather, help us to hear and see our neighbor as you do. And Lord, we pray for our congregation. We pray for Reverend John on this week of rest, but he can't go anywhere. So we pray that you would refresh him and renew him at home. And we thank you for Reverend John. Lord, we also thank you for Peter DeVries and for everything he's doing with our technology so that we can worship together while we're separated. So we thank you for him and his amazing gifts and abilities and technology. Lord, we pray for the family and friends of Vera McGowan as we grieve her loss. We pray for Norfolk Manor, for Riverside Glen, for Stone Lodge, and St. Joseph's Health Center as they all struggle with COVID-19 outbreaks. Give peace and assurance to the residents and give endurance, patience, and protection to the staff. Lord, we pray for those who have recently received a cancer diagnosis. Be with them, Lord, as they reel from this news. We pray for Helen Manberg and Peter Fisher. Give them your peace and your comfort. And we pray for upcoming treatments that they would go ahead in this time. And we pray for success. Lord, we bring these joys and these sorrows to you, along with those that we cannot even voice to ourselves. With the sure and confident hope that you have heard us, not only heard, but lived in Jesus Christ. And now we turn to you as your children and pray as you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning, everyone. As, uh, as you may know, remember and you may know that Diane, Reverend Diane Boyd was um, inducted and ordinated as the minister of Rockford Presbyterian Church. On behalf of uh, the session and the congregation of St. Andrews, we would like to present her with her robe as a gift. I hope that it embraces her with the warmth of God's love as you, Reverend Boyd, minister in your pathway. Did I have it right? There we go. I'm going to put it on. You got it? I've got it. Okay. I'm putting it on. Okay. Can you see? Oops. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Here we go. And the zipper. The most difficult part, doing up the zipper. Let's see. There we go. Can you Excellent. see? Excellent. And there's stuff on the back too. Can you see the back? Yes. There we go. So thank you, everyone. Thank you this, for this, from the session, the congregation, to all of you for your contribution to this robe. 
it's an honor. Um, and I wanted to thank you, not just for the role, but for the whole history at St. Andrews. I was born into St. Andrews, baptized at St. Andrews, brought up at St. Andrews, uh, taught Sunday school, and you have been my community that has brought me to this place. So I want to thank you. Thank you. And now I get to benedict you in my new robe. Can you, you can see me okay? And I'm using Reverend Blair Bertrand's uh, benediction. So hear the benediction. Seek the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ, in the encounter with a stranger. Laugh with the Holy Spirit that brings the good news of great joy. There go. go forward and participate in God's mission. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So thanks for participating in our Mission Awareness Sunday, everybody. <laughs>